I'm going to be working with a recipe album kit from Simple Stories today and I'm gonna just be putting this together and there's a link in the video description where you can get a kit like this if you want and um, it comes with everything you need to make this really nice family recipe album and so I'm starting by taking um, all the elements out uh, including the instructions and just kind of laying it out and getting ready to start scrapbooking and making sure I have everything I need and then um, I'm going to get started so it comes with these recipe dividers um, the snap page protectors uh, the snap recipe cards and this is all from the homespun collection and um, then these instructions on how to put together each page and how to cut your papers and that sort of thing. And um, I actually used the cut guide to cut all my papers first, but ended up having some weird cuts. So I don't know if I just wasn't paying attention or what, but I would maybe cut as pieces as you, as you need them and refer to the cut guide. Um, so in your snap binder, you, the snap binder comes with a bunch of pages and page protectors and dividers, and you're going to be using these throughout the album. Um, you're going to be cutting them up and, and stuff like that. So the best thing to do is just to take them all out, um, right at the beginning so that your binder is empty. Um, cause you're going to be working with all these different sheets and it's just easier to add them, um, one at a time as you need them. Once I have all my supplies sorted and ready to go, I'm gonna start on the front cover. And the front cover starts with a six and a quarter by eight and a half inch piece of this yellow gingham paper. And the directions tell you to round the top right and bottom right corners of this piece of paper, which I decided not to do. Um, for me personally, aesthetically, I don't like how um, rounded corners look on square corners. So since the binder corners are square, I'm going to leave the corners of my yellow gingham piece square. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and ink the edges here. And I'm using the Sand Ink by Prima. It's one of their chalk inks. And I've used a Miracle Tape on the back of the piece to do the edges whenever I'm gonna be putting something on a cover, not in a page protector. I like to use a very strong tape like Miracle Tape or Score Tape or Redline Tape rather than my ATG or a tape runner. You could also use liquid glue if you don't have uh, tape like this. So after I've inked the edges of the yellow gingham and adhered it to the page, I'm going to ink the edges of a five and three quarters by eight inch piece of the red floral paper. And I'm using that same sand colored ink throughout the album. And then I'm going to also use that the miracle tape on the back of it. And again, just keep referring to the cut guide to make sure that you're cutting all your pieces properly. Um, and then just, you know, cut as you go. Um, I think it'll be easier to cut as you go rather than to cut all at once in the beginning, especially since some of the pieces are really similar sizes. So I had to measure them anyway. Um, so I'm going to adhere this in the center of the page and, um, or the center of the cover and make sure it's adhered down nicely. And now I'm going to work on the title card. So I am using a two and a half inch by four inch piece of that navy floral and a one and one quarter inch by three and a half inch piece of that pink paper. And I'm gonna adhere them on top of each other and this is gonna be where I put my title. So I'm gonna adhere the pink piece at an angle in the center of the navy piece. And now I'm going to take one of the yellow stitched hearts from the sticker sheet and I'm going to put foam tape on the back. I use Scotch foam mounting tape here. It's nice and strong and can withstand being on the front cover. It's designed to hold uh, two pound objects to walls and such. So it should be able to hold a paper heart to the front of an album. And I'm going to put it so that it is on both the navy and the pink. 
so that it kind of bridges the gap between those two pieces. Next, I'm gonna take the Family Recipes sticker from the sticker sheet, and I'm going to also adhere it with pop dots to the front um, title card. And I'm also going to be using the Made With Love word stickers. There's a lot of really fun word stickers on this sheet and I'm going to be putting, um, you can see me here, I'm putting pop dots and then I changed my mind. I actually wanted this to be flat so that there were a couple different la levels on the front cover. So this one I'm going to um, adhere with just uh, double stick tape um, just so I know that the adhesive is, is really strong on my sticker. And then I'm going to adhere the family recipes piece at an angle to that. And that is my front title card. And I'm just gonna adhere it so that that piece is touching those two red florals. And that's gonna be a nice central image for my cover. And so here's our title, which is Family Recipes Made With Love. Um, and we're now gonna go ahead and um, add this apron sticker from the sticker sheet to the piece. Once I put my sticker down, I want it to have a soft brown inked edge, just like all the other elements on the page, um, but it's hard to do that with a sticker because of the shiny surface. So I'm taking a fawn colored marker from EK Success and I'm just gonna outline the sticker. And that's gonna give a similar look um, and similar color edging to the sticker that the other pieces have without me having to try to ink um, a shiny sticker with a, a chalk ink. And then I'm going to go around all the other stickers with that as well, like the Made With Love, anything that's not popped up. And now it's time to move on to the inside cover. Working now on the inside cover, I am going to take the snap divider that came with the binder that looks like the kind of notebook paper you use in elementary school to practice your penmanship. And that I am going to uh, cut it down so that it will fit on the center of this navy piece. So the um, elementary school paper, I cut three inches off the bottom and then I trimmed uh, the holes off the side. So because there's no way to cut it. So you get both holes. But um, you could just trim the three inches off the bottom and then um, turn it around so the holes hang off the edge when you go to adhere it because you offset this to the side and you'll see what I mean when I adhere it down. Um, so I end up having to trim more from the notebook paper than I had already cut and I could have just saved one of those cuttings if I skipped it. So now I'm going to adhere this notebook paper to a six inch by eight and a quarter inch piece of that navy floral. And I'm putting it about two inches or an inch and a half actually is what that is. I'm putting it an inch and a half up from the bottom and a half inch in from the side. Um, you know, that just kind of centers it on there. And you see what I mean about it hanging over? So you see how you wouldn't necessarily have to cut the holes off if you just made sure the side with the holes was the side that hung over the edge. Then you could just cut it once. And then I think the edges of all three pieces. Now when I go to adhere this to my inside cover I notice that the fabric on my binder is cut at a slight angle and so there's no way to adhere this where there's not um, an angle. So what I decide to do is I just adhere it so that there's an even amount of chipboard showing on the top bottom and left edge and then I figure I'll just cover that right side um, with a sticker or a punch strip of paper or something down the road. So I'm going to just continue with the album following the instructions and working through and then I'll come back at the end and add something to cover up that gap to make it look more attractive. So now I've taken the typewriter sticker from the sticker sheet and adhered it to the bottom left corner and I am going to take that fawn colored marker with the fine tip from the EK success and I'm going to go around the edges of the typewriter again and I'm just doing that so that it will have a similar effect to the other papers that are on the page. Now um, I chose a fawn colored marker because I'm using a sandy ink um, like a creamy brown ink. If you were using a darker ink like a vintage ink you might want to use a darker brown marker or you could use a navy ink and a navy marker. 
So that sort of thing. So next I'm going to add the family favorites divider that has the kin kitchen conversions on the back. I love that they've included a binder, a, bi a page, a divider that has those kitchen conversions right at the front. And um, you'll notice um, on your dividers that they have kind of a plasticky finish. They're actually spill resistant. Uh, so you can have that in the kitchen with you and just wipe it off if it gets anything splattered on it. So now I'm gonna take one of the four by six, um, one of the pocket pages that has two four by six slots, and I am going to um, put the red and joy card in the top, and then I'm gonna put the stitched heart recipe card in the bottom, and I'm going to add to the back of the stitched heart recipe card uh, the utensil jar in the bottom left corner, and then I'm gonna go around it with the fawn colored marker. And um, I'm just, uh, again, just want everything to be kind of, have the same sort of vibe. So um, I'm outlining my stickers, um, most of my stickers with that same marker. So I'm going to now move to the next page, which is gonna be another one of the pages um, one of the album div, uh, protectors that has two room for two four by six photos or two four by six cards. And I'm putting the tasty card in the top pocket. And then I'm putting one of the recipe cards with the Rick rack and the canisters, spice canisters in the bottom. And then I'm actually going to pull that tasty card right back out of there. Cause I want to add some stickers to the back of it. I'm going to be adding the gingham house. There's um, a couple house stickers on the sticker sheet and you want the multicolored gingham house. And then also I'm going to be adding the word sticker that reads the heart of our home. And I just added some extra um, adhesive to the word sticker because I kind of handled it and fiddled with it a little bit. So I wanted it to be sure to stick down. And then I'm going to go around the house with the fawn marker, the little gingham house. And then if, you know, if you're putting this album together and you have your family photos ready or your recipe photos ready as you go, um, you kind of want to pre-plan it uh, a little bit. This would be a great place to put a square photo, like a three and a half by three and a half photo. Um, and then, you know, put the sticker sort of overlapping or even a four by six photo that had some empty space in the bottom left corner. So the next page is going to be the uh, appetizer page with the quote from Virginia Woolf. And then after that, we're going to be using the polka dot page that you removed from the snap binder. And so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be cutting two inches off the side that does not have holes. And you can see that I'm kind of doing the opposite. I'm cutting, I have a big ruler and I'm cutting the piece that I'm keeping. Um, but it's probably easier for you if you just cut off the two inches that you're not keeping. And then what I'm doing now is I'm finding the center and I'm going to make a tick mark where the center of what's remaining is. Um, and then I'm going to draw a line uh, that goes straight up into the page. And I'm going to draw that line about an inch and a half deep. So following that center mark, I'm going to draw a line that's um, actually that looks more like two and a half inches, um, an inch and a half, two inches. Um, and that is I'm going to turn it into a pennant. And for me, the easiest way to make a pennant is to make a, a line straight up into the page and then to draw two connecting lines from each corner to the point at the top of the line I drew. And then that way I know that my V is basically centered and it's even. And so that's how I did that. So now I'm taking the tab sticker uh, that has today written on it and I'm removing the sticky from it with a perfect, and um, with an anti-static bag. And now that I've used an anti-static bag, I have to add adhesive back to it so that I can return the <laughs> return some stickiness to it. So I'm going to also take that navy heart. I'm going to add it to the edge there. And then here you'll see me staple them together. Don't 
um, my advice would be don't staple them together until they're on the banner because I ended up with the staples in between the stickers and the banner and that made a little tiny lump. It's not really noticeable, you know, I mean, I notice it because I'm kind of a, tend to have a, a little bit of a perfectionist streak. Um, but I, if I had to do it all over again, I would do the staples last after I had adhered it to the page. Um, because then that would have been just a little bit more finished of a look. And so now that's ready to pop into the page. And all of these dividers are great places to add photos and journaling. And this recipe album is a really awesome way to talk about food in your family. Um, so, I mean, just kind of think about that as you go and how you can tell the stories of the food in your family and, and who they, the dishes come from and that sort of thing. Um, so in that four by six page protector, I just put the recipe card with the stitched florals at the bottom on in the top pocket. And in the bottom pocket, I put the recipe card with the utensils jar. And now I am taking a five and three quarter inch by seven and a half inch piece of the burlap doily paper and I've inked the edges and now I'm putting adhesive on it so I can adhere it to the center of the chipboard divider with a tab at the top. And this is gonna be a great base for a layout later on. So that's a great place for you to add a layout um, front and back. So next we're gonna add the sauces and dressing divider, which is the one that has the keep calm and add butter. And then another four by six uh, pocket page with the stitch hearts on the top and the Rick Rack and Spice Jars card on the bottom. And then the next page is the page with the utensil jar and it's the soups and spices divider. And then I'm going to take this yummy card and the stitched heart recipe card and I'm going to put them in the book. And I actually um, put them in backwards. <laughs> so I want the yummy card to actually have the chevron showing on the other side of the page. So, um, so I'm going to turn it around here. Actually going to turn both cards around. So there we go. And so for this next page, we're going to need another one of the sheets from the snapbook that came in the snapbook. And this one is the one that's the grid. And I am gonna take um, a, a little strip of the, um, the navy floral paper and I'm gonna stick it to the edge. And this is where I have um, deviated from the book. So bear in mind, if you do this, um, then you're going to now be off course from the instructions. Um, but the reason I did it this way is because the way that they intended to do it, and you'll see it in step 12 of the instructions, was that you would put this card, you would cut the holes off and put it in a six by eight divider. And then the navy from the page beneath it would show through on the border. Um, but I wanted to save that six by eight divider for a large family photo at the front of the book. And I'll talk about that at the end of the video when I talk about my modifications. So, um, you know, that's up to you, uh, how you want to handle it. So just lump, you know, do it either way, but just know that if you do it like this, then you're going to, um, be a little bit different with them. What's in the book. And so now I've taken the family Scrabble tiles and um, I have kind of put them in the upper right corner of the page, kind of all cattywampus so that they are, you know, on top of each other. They look like maybe they've spilled there. And then I've added the um, love, hope and faith. I'm sorry. I've added the under our roof word strip beneath the family sticker. And so now I'm just going to punch the holes from where my, um, where my strip is covering the, uh, the holes in the page, which is a st step you can skip 
if you are going to be <laughs> following the directions. And then I have um, also outlined all the letters and the word sticker with the fawn marker and then take in the potted plants that say love, hope, and faith and put them in the bottom right corner. And then for the next step, I'm adding the vegetables divider, which is the one with the navy floral and the utensils. And then the next thing that I'll be adding is more of the four by six cards. I'm putting on the top, the Bon Appetit card, and on the bottom, uh, a stitched floral, that stitched floral. And on the back of the Bon Appetit card, I'm adding the floral house sticker in the bottom left corner. And then I'm gonna just go around it with my marker again. And put them back in the page protector. And for the next four by six pocket page, I'm going to take one of the utensil recipe cards and the hungry question mark card and put them in the book. And for the hungry card, I am going to take one of the navy stitched hearts and pop it up with foam tape. And I'm gonna add that next to the hungry to decorate that tag. So that'll be there. Um, and I played around with a couple different positions and ended up liking it to the left of Hungary. And there's that page. And then this is another um, a deviation is at the, in step 15, they want you to add another tab and uh, to, to that card at the top and I use that tab elsewhere. Um, so you'll see it again later. So for the next page, you're gonna add the side dishes divider, which is the one that reads, the kitchen is the heart of the home. And then you're gonna get the page protector that has um, one like two by eight slot and two four by four slots. And this is where they want you to put um, the piece of floral paper that I used to decorate um, my page. And the previous page, the one where that you were supposed to cut and put in a page protector. And so what I did is you, you have a scrap left, or at least I had a scrap left of the floral paper that was about two by four. And so I'm just gonna stick it in that spot up there and that'll give the same look. The paper won't go all the way down, but I actually like it better this way. Um, you'll see another page later where the paper does go all the way down the edge of this card and it's just a, um, not a look that I liked as much as this. So the next one is gonna be a, uh, the one with three four by four pages. And so you're gonna, t or pockets. So you're gonna take the fab card and cut it in half and put those in the top two pockets. And then you're gonna put a three by four navy floral in the bottom left and a three by four red floral in the bottom right. And then turn it over. And then when you turn it over, this is a great place to add photos of your family again. So the next step is we're going to be, um, actually taking another one of the pages. This is the ledger and I'm going to turn it so that the holes are to the right and score it three inches in from the edge with my Martha Stewart scoreboard. And then I'm going to fold that edge over. Then I'm going to go ahead and open it up and lay it flat and take the floral garland from the sticker sheet and put it in the bottom right corner. And then once I have that position, I'm gonna carefully fold it again to make sure that the sticker is gonna fold correctly. And then I'm gonna take the together, always, and our home um, tab stickers and adhere them back to back at the top of that, right up on the crease so that when it's closed, they're on the far edge. 
And um, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the red stitched hearts and I'm going to put a foam square right in the middle. And then I'm going to overlap that sticker onto um, the edge of the paper so that that is holding the edge of the paper down. But it's not stuck to the edge of the paper. You can move the edge of the paper underneath. That just keeps your flap closed. And now I'm going to add um, the, the main dishes divider, which is the one with that awesome garland at the top. Um, it's one of my favorite dividers in the collection. And then next is another one of the page protectors with the two four by six pockets. And I'm going to put a utensil holder in the top pocket and the scrumptious card in the bottom pocket. And then on the back of the scrumptious card, I'm going to put the bicycle from the sticker collection. And that is going to make it um, just look a little more fun. And then that's going to go in the book. And we're going to add another uh, pocket page with two pockets for four by six photos or cards. And I'm going to add the stitched heart card in the bottom pocket and the divine card in the top pocket. And I'm going to decorate the stitched heart recipe card with this adorable gingham oven mitt which I'm going to put directly on the card. And then I'm going to take one of the pink stitched hearts and I'm going to add some pop dots uh, to the back and I'm going to put it right there on the card for a little extra dimension. And then we're going to go and just stick those both in the pockets before we move on to the next section, which is going to start with the divider, the chipboard divider with the tab in the center. So that's what we're going to be doing next. So I'm just going to take these pockets, put them in their protector, and then we're going to move on to the next page. So I'm now starting the middle divider in the homespun recipe album, and I am inking the edges of a four inch by seven and a half inch piece of the navy floral paper. And then I'm going to add the miracle tape to the back of it and adhere it to the page. And I'm adhering it to the page about one inch in from the edge with the tab and centered top to bottom. You can just eyeball it if you want to. I'm using the grid on my mat to line it up fairly well. Once the piece of floral paper is adhered to the chipboard, I'm going to be adding an accent sticker and I'm using the 12 inch ruler border sticker from the collection. I'm adhering it about one inch in from the edge and I will save that little piece that I just cut off to use later in the album. Next, I'm taking the memories word sticker and adhering it directly to that adorable little canning jar with the heart and I'm going to add this to the page with a foam tape. And this page is an excellent page to add a couple of three by four or three by three photos and some journaling or a larger photo and some journaling. This whole album is full of areas where you can document the people who brought these recipes into your life and the people that you share these recipes with so that while it's a fully functional recipe album, it is also a memory keeping book. So once the chipboard piece is completed, it goes back into the album and we're going to work on the next page, which is adding the let's roll um, page which is the bread divider and then we're going to take the chevron divider from the snap album and the red sweet four by six card and we're going to take some tape and add it to both short sides and the bottom long side of the sweet card which is going to turn it into a pocket and this pocket will be used to hold recipe cards or whatever else you would like it to hold. 
You can also adhere this with a thin line of liquid glue if you're worried about cards getting stuck in the adhesive. And um, Miracle Tape has a paper backing that's very thin and easy to tear. So uh, you see me grab things off my desk, rulers, that was the perfect trim tool. Um, and that enables me to just um, tear it instead of having to always cut it with a knife or with a pair of scissors. And then once I've created that pocket, I'm just going to put one of the stitched heart recipe cards inside. So now I'm going to be working with one of the page protectors that has the two by eight inch pocket and the two four by four pockets. And you'll get to see how um, they originally designed these pockets to be handled versus the way that I did the first one. And that way, um, having seen both versions, you can decide which one you like better. Um, the one thing to remember as you're working on these pockets and you'll see I have to restart this pocket from scratch is that in order to get the recipe card on the back um, you have to put that card in first so you have to work from the back to the front um, and that's just that's just something to remember if you do do it this way and so you're just using the two inch by eight inch strip of the red polka dot uh, card stock that you cut off the red polka dot design uh, banner divider. That's the one that we turned into a banner. And then a four by four piece of the floral and then a stitched floral recipe card. Um, and you can see how getting the recipe cards in there, the thicker it gets, the more they kind of curl, but you can flatten them out. I'm just sticking a pen in there and it looks totally flat and perfect in the recipe inside the page protector. It doesn't look like it's bent. And then on the back, I use the canisters, the flower canisters. So now I am going to move on to the next page protector, which is one of the ones that has two three by four cards at the top and one four by six card at the bottom. And I am putting the three by four cards in the top. And these are three by four cards with the doily, uh, the burlap doily. And again, uh, remember as you're going through this that you can conserve paper by just adding photos directly to these pockets or journaling spots directly to these pockets. If you use the snap albums from simple stories on a regular basis for recording your daily memories, or if you do project life, um, you can just slide those cards right in here as well. So now we're going to add the desserts divider. And then the next page will be another page protector that has two, three by four and one, four by six. And on the yellow gingham, I'm adding the wood grain house with the heart. And I'll also be adding the being together word strip. And I'm gonna put that right over the house as well. And these stickers could go directly over a photo or you could put a small photo behind them matted on the cardstock. There's a lot of options for you here. And then the three by four red floral and then the, three by the four by six card. I'm just gonna remove the four by six card quickly here and add the key sticker to the back. And when you add stickers to cards, I like to just write all around them, you know, so that gives the journaling an interesting shape and it's a lot of fun. After we finished with adding the sticker, I'm going around the edges with my fawn marker by EK Success. If you're looking for a nice fine tip markers, um, there's EK Success has the Zig writers, which are great. Uh, or uh, Sakura has a wide variety of uh, fine point felt tip markers as well. So now I'm taking the diagonal stripe divider from the snap album and I'm cutting one and three quarters inches off both the top and the bottom. And I'll be taking these one and three quarter inch pieces and turning them into banners by cutting a line straight up into the center and then cutting in from each corner to the top of that line. 
I'll put the first of these two banners on top of this floral piece, which is six inches by seven and one half inches. And now I'm just inking the edges of both the floral paper and the banner paper. And one thing I wish I had done to this banner is tie some string or twine around it. Um, I think it would have looked cool with a natural sort of element on it. So that's something that you could do on your pages. If you had any kitchen charms, like um, I actually happen to have a fork, knife and spoon charm uh, they would look awesome hanging from, from here or another banner with some twine, um, or any kind of embellishments that, that you might have that say family, uh, like hearts, that sort of thing. And so I've just adhered the banner to the, uh, paper and now I'm going to adhere the paper to the page with Miracle Tape. And I'm just running this up right against the holes and centering it top to bottom. And I love how the banner extends over the edge of the divider as well as lays on top of the tab. And that we're basically getting three different levels there. Uh, it's a nice, nice position for the banner to be in. It's a little higher up on mine than in the instructions. This is page, this is instruction set 30 from the printed instructions, but um, it's just more pleasing to me this way. So now we're gonna be adding the cookies divider. And I love the life is short, lick the bowl sentiment on the front of that. And then another four by six pocket page with the flower container pocket in the top and the stitched heart pocket on the bottom. And then I'm taking the stickers from the, with the containers and putting it on the back of the stitched heart one. And what I did with the flower is I just set the flower down. I didn't press it down until I got the sugar positioned underneath it. And then I pressed everything down. The next page is four three by four pockets and I will be taking the um, pocket and cutting it in card and cutting it in half and putting in the two bottom pockets and to the back of one side the side that will be on the left I will be adding the clothespin sticker from the sticker sheet I'll also be adding the I love you or just love you um, word sticker strip and then the teal heart, one of the teal hearts. So I'm just getting everything positioned where I want it and then I'll be adding the teal heart with foam tape. And uh, you can see how popping these hearts up and layering them over the words just gives it a really fun, whimsical look. And the top two um, page pockets are blank for now, but I will be adding to them later. So we're going to add the slow cooker divider and then move on to the next four by six pocket page. We will put the Navy Delish card in the top and the stitched floral car recipe card in the bottom. And on the back of the stitched floral recipe card, I'm putting the ampersand sticker from the collection. So now we're going to take our second strip of diagonal paper and turn it into a banner as well as the snap divider that is white with a polka dot border and they will form the base of our next page. I'm going to start by adding the tin can and flowers to the bottom right corner of the page and then I'm going to in add the banner to the top of the page. And again, I have left the banner full length so that it will hang over the edge. If you don't want it to hang over the edge, you can cut it a little bit shorter, uh, it's just however you prefer. And then I'm going to adhere the banner to the top of the page and I'm going to use some of the polka dots, one of the rows of polka dots to make sure that it's straight and then I'm going to adhere it about a half an inch from the top of the page. 
Next I'll be taking the love stickers from the collection and putting them on the banner. And I'm having some of them be crooked, some of them be higher, some of them be lower. The letters themselves have a very hand-drawn, hand-cut, sort of homemade look. So I'm going to reinforce that look by um, not putting them in a perfectly straight row. Uh, I didn't like how they seemed to blend into the banner. It was kind of two tiny patterns too close to each other. So I'm going to give a little breathing room between the stickers and the pattern of the diagonal by going around the edge of the stickers with a fine black pen. And that is going to make a big difference in accentuating the letters so that they are easier to read and have more presence on the page. And that will finish off that page. So it goes into the album and then um, this got cut out but the next thing I put in there is the miscellaneous divider which is the one with the quote from Sophia Loren. And so, so that's in there. That's the floral page you see on the top left there. So next I'm taking what's left of the striped divider and what's left of the elementary school notebook paper. And I'm going to layer the elementary school notebook paper on top of the striped divider. And then I'm going to add a tab that says you and me on it, followed by a rolling pin. And I'm going to outline the stickers with my fawn marker. And here is where I'm making a couple departures from the instructions. This is instruction set number 38. The first thing is that I moved the rolling pin from the bottom of the journaling spot to where it's layered over the tab. I just liked that look better to me. It just seemed to work better visually for me. The other thing is that the instructions have you take that 12 inch scalloped stitched heart border sticker sheet and put it along the edge of this piece so that it has a scalloped border. I didn't do that because I am going to save that border to use it to kind of um, fix that uh, oddly shaped gap that I have in the front of my book. So now I'm just taking another snap page and I added the let's eat yellow card to the top and a stitch flower recipe card to the bottom. And the last thing to do is to use one of the six by eight pockets um, to put this ampersand notebook paper in. So the first thing you need to do is cut the holes off. So cut it so that it's six inches and then um, it will fit in the page protector. Now this is either your last page protector. If you used the page protector the first time, the six by eight page protector the first time the instruction said to, you won't have any page protectors left at this point. If you set up your page the way I set up my page and didn't use your page protector, you will have one page protector left after this. And I will talk about why I moved that page protector and where I moved it to when we go through the final flip through of the album. So now I'm taking the hello telephone sticker, putting foam tape on the back and layering it over the ampersand. This is different than the instructions, which has the phone in the upper left corner. I just like how it looks in the bottom right corner better. So now we're at the end of the book. We're literally on, this is the back cover and we are going to add this awesome, awesome garland sticker to the corner of the back cover. The instructions also want you to add a stitched with love word strip and one of those hearts to the bottom right corner, which I am not going to do. I'll be using those stickers elsewhere in the album. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just flipping through the pages that I've made to see where I could fill in some gaps. So whatever gaps have been left, um, maybe that I don't find as pleasing uh, or I, where something is, is needed. And I'm just kind of looking through and trying to identify those areas. And I'm going to do this twice, actually. So the first thing I'm going to do is address the issue of what goes in these two empty page protectors. 
I'm actually going to add a recipe card to these empty page protectors um, myself. Now you actually don't necessarily need to do that. You could put photos there and that would solve the problem of the empty three by four card pocket things. Um, it's totally up to you how you want to handle that. But this one, I'm just going to cut this recipe card in half um, and then add one half of it to each of those pockets. And you could um, probably still use a recipe card if you did this to it. You just have to be really careful to make sure that the pieces were in the same position inside the pocket at all times, which you could do by adding a little tiny drop of glue to the corner of uh, the, the recipe card to keep it held in place in the pocket so it doesn't slide up or down. So I'm going to keep flipping through and looking for areas that need something else. So I'm going to be adding a recipe card to the back of the striped page, half page. You could also add a photo to the back of the half page. That's another way that you could add uh, some extra oomph to it. And now I'm going to go back through it for the last time and try and sort out exactly what I want to do with each section. So now I'm going to take the scalloped stickers and I'm going to put them um, in the front of the book like so. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that it begins and ends in the same position. So I don't want it to begin halfway through a scallop and end in the dip in between two scallops. I want it to either start in the dip between two scallops or end halfway through two scallops. Um, so I always make sure that I position my stickers, um, my particular, my scallop border stickers like that whenever I can. And so now I'm just taking um, some half inch miracle tape and adding it to the back of the sticker. This is gonna be inside the front cover. So it's gonna be in a part of the album that is handled a lot more heavily than other parts of the album. So this sticker in particular really needs to be adhered well. And um, so I'll be using tape to reinforce the sticker's own backing. And then I, before I, um, Before I stick it down, I'm just going to check one more time where I need to cut it to make sure I know the best place. And so I'm going to cut it so it begins and ends halfway through a scallop and then I'm going to press it down. I'm going to save what's left of the sticker because that can be used later in the album as an added embellishment and to give the sticker more weight on the page and to help it compete with that dark navy floral, I am going to use my fine tip black pen to go around the edges of the sticker with the pen, both with the scalloped edge and also I'm going to fill in around each of the holes. And that's just, again, going to give the sticker more weight on the page, make it look like the sticker has more dimension than it does by providing like a shadow effect. I'll just give space and breathing room in between the layers. So my final flip through, this is where I'm going to put the stickers I have left. I just decided that I only had a handful of stickers left, so I was just going to find them all homes in this album so I could throw the sheet away. So here is the stitch together with love that I didn't put in the back cover. I'm going to add it to the red polka dot banner. And here is the Love You um, sticker that I was supposed to add somewhere else. I don't remember where, um, but this page was a little plain to me. So I wanted to add it to this so it wasn't just a sheet of pattern paper. And so I'm not only adding the Love You or Love It um, tab with the gingham, but I'll also be adding one of the hearts. And this is the heart that was supposed to go in the back of the, the book. So now I'm just going to keep flipping, thinking about where maybe I want to add some stuff. And I've decided that this four by four square is a good place to add some things. So I'm taking the remnant I have of my ruler border sticker and the remnant I have of my heart border sticker and I'm just going to stick them together. 
and then once they're stuck together I'm going to adhere them to my page as one piece. I thought about adding those flowers but I decided to save them for later on in the book. I think about adding a couple other things, um, particularly that cake stand, but um, in the end I decide not to put it there, but rather I'm going to put it here on this card. So I'm going to put that cake stand there. And again, um, this would be the perfect place to, the way when you think about how you can do this album, you think about if you have a cake recipe, then you can have a picture from a birthday party of someone eating cake. And that's a perfect place for a cake stand. So just kind of think about what you're going to want going through the album. And then kind of with intention, decorate your cards and your photos. The only thing left to do is add the last of my 4x6 recipe cards, which I will do in this sweet pocket. And that finishes off the album. So I'll do one final flip through and then we'll be finished. I've finished the construction portion of this video and I want to talk now more about kind of the theory behind the book and, and how you can use this book. So the first thing I want to cover is the idea that it's family recipes made with love and you know there's a place in the front for a dedication. There's a place on the first divider for the family name and then I've kept this six by eight page protector back so that I have something to put a large six by eight photo in so we can have a family photo right in the front of the book. And um, whether you want to use this for actual food, for actual recipes or not, is totally up to you because this is something where you could create mini layouts to go on the back of these cards. And on these recipe cards, you could journal recipes for life, for love, for happiness, um, that sort of thing. So this could literally be your recipes for a happy home or a happy family or anything like that. And then on all these big dividers, these chipboard dividers, you can put mini layouts about different family members or different parts of the family or different years growing up. Or if you want to go with the recipe theme, think about where your family recipes come from and maybe talk about that. And you can use these spaces um, to write about where these recipes come from to include photos of the people who you most closely identify these recipes with and to talk about the different food traditions you have in your family. And then this becomes an heirloom and a heritage album as well as a cookbook and it can be handed down to someone or given as a gift to someone and it really becomes a family treasure. And there are so many things that you maybe do as a family that are worth recording that are just so interesting and that are, are just that you do in your family. In my family, we eat nachos on Christmas Eve every year for the decades we've done this. Um, this year is the first time we changed the recipe actually <laughs> in as long as I can remember. And um, although it was still nachos, um, we just tweaked it. Um, it started because when we were kids, um, and they did, they wanted something quick and easy to feed us with before they put us down for naps before midnight church service. And then they would have us sleep in the pews while they went to church, um, so that we would wake, just go right to bed when we got home. Um, but we've kept doing it even though we're all adults now. And so that's the kind of thing that you can include in there. I have a friend who every year on the day after Thanksgiving, their family makes a particular kind of cookie. Um, that would be a particular, you could include the recipe and then talk about the cookies and why they make them and include photos of the whole family getting together to, to make these cookies every year. So uh, just think about this book and and, and what it could be beyond just the practical. And then for the practical, of course, I mean, it's a really attractive, really cute recipe album. So you can just use it to keep your recipes. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the book and have a great week, everyone. Bye now.